Hi everyone, this is Richard. In these series of videos, we're going to go over Stage XL, which is a rendering engine for Dart. So in this video, we're just going to do an introduction, setup, and then we'll learn Stage XL in the future. Now, I don't really know Stage XL. I know just the very basics of it. But um, as we go through, we're going to kind of learn it. And I'm going to learn at least document it. And maybe you can learn something from it, at least introduce you to it. You might be already aware of it. But this is a good opportunity for me. So when um it, it, from what we've actually learned we can do a lot of basics if you've been following some videos in the past for, that i've done we've had some basic videos that you can do nice simple web pages and things like that but anything else that's more animated where things are actually moving across the screen our, from what we've learned, we are a little bit limited on what we can actually do, right? So we haven't learned anything where we can make an object go across the screen, green up and down and stuff like that, um, twist around in circles or anything of that nature. So that's what we're going to try to learn with Stage XL. So what is Stage XL? Well, Stage XL is a rendering engine. And, okay, what's a rendering engine? Well, a rendering engine, when you render something, you're basically talking about getting code and saying, how does it actually show on the browser? Okay, so if you have the web page, right, you get the web page, here's the HTML, and you render it, you show it on the screen, and this is how it actually looks. Okay, so that's number one. Um, number two, what's an engine? Okay, I'm going to do a quick simple thing. I'm going to do a pub serve. We're going to go through the setup in just a second here, okay? And I'm going to reload this, and let's see what it actually does. If anything, it's compiling, I think. Yep. There we go. Okay. So we look at the screen. Okay. What just actually happened? Let's do that over. The icon is coming down, bouncing up and down when it hits a certain point, right? Starts in the center and it moves up, that back and forth. How do we actually do something like that? Well, what we're actually doing is getting this image and we're getting it here, we're moving it here, we're moving it here, or we're erasing it and redrawing it here, erasing it, redrawing, and going all the way down. Once it hits a certain point, we're drawing it, erasing it, drawing it, and it goes up and down. But to make, if you think about what we know so far, to make an icon or an image move up and down on the screen, that's not something I've actually reviewed before. So it's definitely new. So what are the equations that I need? What is the programming that I actually need in order to get something like that to go back and forth? Well, I really don't know how to do that. Okay. So I don't really know what equations I would need. It's pretty complicated because if you look at this, as it drops slowly, it picks up speed. So there's actually some type of gravity going on here. So it's accelerating as it comes down. So th there is some type of equation that is calculating how this is actually behaving in this web page. All right, so that sounds pretty complicated, maybe not super complicated, but complicated for me, all right? And so since I don't know how to actually make something like that, I'm gonna cheat and use some library, which is gonna be Stage XL. So it's basically an engine, it's the pre-built, somebody pre-built these tools, which are basically libraries, which help us make these animations and in a certain fashion. So I don't have to make the equation of how to drop this down back and forth. Somebody did for me. All I really need to do is just access this information so I could get my images to actually go up and down or move around however you want to do it. Okay. And if you actually click on this, it makes it twist around. And if you, you can make it go twisted any time itself. Let me try that again. Catch it right there. There we go. So, so you can do that just as long as you left click on the icon. Okay, so how did I get here to, to begin with? And let's start this out. The setup. Well, first of all, you got to go into an empty folder. Em empty folder. And we're, what, what we're going to do is stage hand, like we've used before. And we're going to use this one, web stage Excel. That's been there for a little bit of a while. So this is very nice. Web stage Excel. No, I, obviously I have this already, so I'm not going to actually hit enter, but you would actually hit enter and it starts this setup. Then I'm going to go to pubspec.yaml and I'm going to insert this inside of here. So if you are on, if you're watching this video much later and you are on Dart 2.0 or above, you won't need this. But for right now, we're on Dart 1.24.2. 
So we're going to have to put web compiler debug dart dev C. We don't have to do this, but the purpose of something like this, if you saw a previous video of mine, is so that any changes that we make, we don't have to recompile the whole application. We could just recompile just the part that you changed so it makes reloading much easier. Oh, whoops. Okay. Um, I stopped the pub serve. So add that on top of the pubspec.yaml, hit save, and then under the terminal, hit pub serve, and we go from there. And it'll run from there. Okay. So nice and simple. We're, I hope we're on the same page. I changed this around a little bit, but we'll go over each of these features uh, and hopefully um, a lot of the StageXL library in the future. Okay. Thank you.